Each episode of Brain Health Unchaining Your Pain with Dr. Ruth Allen is for educational and demonstration purposes only. The information shared in each episode should not be interpreted as medical advice. This episode should not be used to self-diagnose or self-treat any health, medical or physical condition. Do not use this episode to avoid going to your healthcare professional or to replace the advice they give you. Consult with a trusted healthcare professional before doing anything contained in this episode. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact www.ruthmaryallen.com forward slash connect. Welcome to the show, Brain Health Unchaining Your Pain. I am really excited to be joined by the wonderful Karen Mayo. Karen, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dr. Ruth. So excited to be here. I know, I'm really excited to have you because we've been trying to connect for so long, haven't we? And it's so great that we've finally done it. So for those that don't know Karen, she's an integrative nutritionist of the AIM Clinics in New York. She's an award-winning international bestseller of the book Mindful Eating, which I'm absolutely loving, which is all about 30 days to a whole new you. And she's authored two more books. um, And she's been a couple of times on the Dr. Oz show, which is fab, and the Jack Cranfield show. And she's also appeared on the TEDx stage, Mindful Eating with Mayo, as well as a whole host of other things. So I'm super excited to talk to you because I know we both, um, I'm a partner with the Amen Clinics and just nutrition is like foundational for me in the context of optimising our unique brains. And I never, ever paid any attention to it until I um, hit rock bottom and had to go on a brain health journey. So I'm super excited to learn what you have to share in the context of our nutrition and getting it right, and also in particular mindful eating. Yes, you know, it's um, it's generally really easy to eat healthy. Um, it's just a matter of, um, you know, just making those healthy habits every day and keeping, um, keeping stuff available so that when you go and grab that you have something healthy. Yeah, I agree. And I think... Um we forget that it is easy and we sometimes make it out to be really complicated um almost like it's um make a mountain out of a molehill (laughs) whereas actually it's we just have to think differently about how we interact with our food environment and focus on the food environment rather than the uh, processed food (laughs) environment um as as our source for eating so before we dive into your journey and uh, that led you to where you are today i'd love to know what you are passionate about in life right now passionate about um i um i'm in the process of writing two more books so that you know in itself is um the passion and uh, just creating creating and um being helpful to others and giving back and being of service yeah do you know i think it's so important that we do have that you know, maintain that creativity spark. And um, we often can lose it, can't we, when we get to some sort of time in our adult development that we're not allowed to be creative or that's all part of um, our childhood. Right. But actually, it's what sparks new inventions and innovations and opportunities to really change other people's lives like you mentioned so yeah so um i believe everyone should play every day right because as adults we never really get that time so just um even just playing cards or you know just playing some just go out and play because that play is part of the creative you know just shut everything down go outside you know and just take a walk just stop and smell the roses because it really is um, so important for our our subconscious, our conscious, our brain health, and our soul. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And we, we had a guest on the show, Steve Sims, who talked about Go For Stupid, which is all about, you know, re- reactivating that childhood element inside yourself and being willing to push the envelope and push the boundaries and ask stupid questions. Yes. Because no question is a silly question, particularly in the eyes of children. And that's what entrepreneurs do, you know. 
they push the boundary of possibility. Absolutely. And all of us entrepreneurs are children, really uh, big kids. But um, and that's what keeps us going. You know, that's the creative part. And uh, with these two new books I have coming out, it's just so interesting because, you know, the universe is showering me with all kinds of really great stuff. And um, it's been really, really super interesting. And in the connections um, that have come because of me just putting putting that creative out there. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I think it's um, it's something that we really underestimate, isn't it? In terms of doors it can open and the opportunities it can bring. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. When you're like the least expected, things happen when you're being creative, when you're playing, um, when you're just having fun, you know, just uh, actually living life. Just living your life. Um, is I'd, I'd love to um, learn your life story because I know you've got a very uh, interesting one. But um, <laughs> what for you is optimal brain health in the context of your life's journey before we start? Um, so optimal brain health um, is a combination of, again, play, right? Food, supplements, and, you know, just having a good foundation of spiritual and um, family, faith, um, around you. And um, was there ever been a time in your life or could you take us back to a time where those elements weren't fully present? Mm, that's a very good question. So um, personally, for myself, probably there were some times when I'm, you know, there were times where I questioned a lot of things, you know, you mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur, you're, you have that roller coaster of um, success. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call it success. Because it is, uh, it's a roller coaster of success. Um, but I think that just going back to faith, you know, and um, and just knowing that uh, you're always protected. Yeah, yeah. I I'd love um, if you could share with the listeners and the viewers your journey that led you into becoming a, a nutritional uh, integrative nutritionist. Because um, uh, I know you started life on a farm. Yes. Yep. So um, started on a farm growing up in Pennsylvania. Uh, we had pigs and we had cows and we had a big, huge garden that um, every weekend we, you know, me and my sister, um, my middle sister, we always had to like to pull the weeds and um, feed them to the, the pigs and the cows. But, you know, as a girl growing up, it wasn't like the best fun thing to do, you know, <laughs> especially on a Saturday morning. Um, but it was a great way to grow up. I'm so grateful. And um, so my journey led me to um, where my youngest sister um, enlisted into the army. She was a single mom. She still is a single mom. Um, and uh, my nephew couldn't go with her to boot camp. So uh, she asked if he could come stay with me. So prior to him coming to stay with me, he was eating everything from fast food to TV dinners. And his favorite snack was in a bag with food coloring, red, blue, yellow. So you kind of get the idea there. He was um, taking medication and um, diagnosed with ADHD. And um, basically what happened is I just established a new routine for him. So it was breakfast, lunch, and dinner I made for him. Um, and everything was going well. And I get a call from the school that they wanted to see me about my nephew. I was like, oh my gosh, what, you know, what could possibly have happened? <laughs> So um, I go to the school the day of the meeting and I walk through the doorway and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm in big trouble. There was the principal, the vice principal, Scott's teachers. And then when you're diagnosed with ADHD, there's a special set of teachers. And then there was a person from the school district and um, the person, uh, the teacher who called me, she was like, Karen, don't worry, you're not in trouble go ahead and have a seat. And I'm like, oh my gosh, the first time I get called to the principal's office and I'm not in trouble. <laughs> so uh, I sit there and I, I listen. Um, his math teacher was like, Karen, we are in awe of him. He is multiplying three numbers by three numbers, arriving at the correct answer without using scratch paper. And I'm like, okay. Um, that's wonderful. And then they rewarded him with straight A's in math throughout the school year. He was on the honor roll and he was in the top 10% of the kids nationwide with the online math problems. Wow. Yeah. And then the question, what did I do? They saw his past grades. 
they realized he was a C student at best, always sliding by. And um, now straight A's on a roll. And they had some questions, of course. So they asked me what I was doing. And at that point, I was like, what I was doing? Uh, <laughs> I wasn't me personally. I, I wasn't doing anything. It was just all him. But when it came to, um, you know, taking care of him uh, as a sixth grader, um, I was feeding him. I just changed his diet. Ultimately, what happened? I changed his diet from those, you know, foods um, without any nutrition. Yeah, which do lead to nutritional deficiencies, and um, and ultimately, yes, that's what happened. And so I thought, if I can do this with a sixth grader, I need to get out and talk to people. So that's when I um, I was in finance and lending at Wells Fargo. Mm -hmm. I changed my career, um, and I've been on this journey ever since. And you know, I've always asked the question. You know what can you do for humanity you know what can you do to help others you know feel better so this is my passion and mission and um i'm excited about it and i love what i do i think that's such an amazing story and you know was really helped um by the aiming clinics with um nutritional advice for my daughter um lily who who was born by c-section and she uh, was getting sick the first year of her life quite a lot and one of the pieces of advice um, was to um, offer a bro probiotic yes because she hadn't received the um, lovely uh, microbiota yes <laughs> that she would get through normal um, birthing yeah. channels yeah um, and since taking that um, we took it she took it from the age of about one I think was when I went for yeah. um, request for uh, support outside the normal medical channels um, which were you know the solution was antibiotics which I wasn't at all happy with um, she's not ha been on an antibiotic um, or had any real um, health issues other than just the common cold since and she's had COVID but I think you know that is very difficult for children to avoid that but um it's amazing the shift that you can make through um nutritional intervention absolutely yes probiotics are so important everyone should be on a probiotic just because of our way our food is made um and just the modern diet you know there's definitely um where there's a need to, to do probiotics at least um once a day if not twice a day hmm. you know so i'd love I'd love to know, um, you know, obviously we're, we're talking about the standard American diet, which is the, <laughs> often called the sad <laughs> diet, which is, is actually making people very sad um, and unhealthy, is what are the um, common nutritional deficiencies that we see um, now as a general health population that we weren't seeing uh, before we created this um farming ecosystem that's no longer um, serving us, but actually hurting us. I know. I love how you put that because a lot of people don't realize that our farming has changed so much. So our nutritional deficiencies that we're seeing con constantly at the clinic is zinc, copper, mm -hmm. iron, and magnesium. And the really the mental health component of this and the you know brain health component of this is if you're deficient in B, your amino acid, acids, um, D and magnesium, that mm -hmm. is really the trifecta for uh, mental, you know, mental health issues, brain health issues. Um, so you really want to make sure that you check your levels um, via blood test or, mm -hmm. you know, take some supplement. But what happens is, you know, with these nutritional deficiencies, our brain development is, you know, definitely not help working properly. Uh, with most children, they're eating uh, you know, chicken nuggets and French fries or mac and cheese, and none of them are getting the nutrition that they need. You know, there's no zinc, copper, iron, and magnesium in chicken nuggets or in mac and cheese. Yeah. So again, they're having those deficiencies and their brain is developing or not developing the correct way or normally. Mm. And I think it, I think it's interesting, isn't it? Because often people we talk about a food desert. So yeah. we are living now in a food desert, but we have more food than we can possibly eat, but it's it's nutritionally um, barren. Yeah, exactly. It's definitely. And, you know, um, with the B vitamins, too, that one is for, um, 
you know, neurologically, yeah. those are for your um, abnorm abnormal or uh, that especially like B9, it's really essential for mm -hmm. the production of the serotonin, which is your neurotransmitters, which control impulse behavior and then also improve mental focus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and then we have the lack of B12 and B6, which then leads to hyperactivity. Yeah. And now I've noticed that, you know, B12 also have had clients who've had really low levels of B12 that's caused them heart palpitations. Yes. And it has not been picked up by clinicians here in the UK. They don't bother to measure B12 levels and it can hugely impact someone's um, heart health. Yes, absolutely. And you know what, too? Magnesium is like the one of the deficiencies that the brain like picks up on magnesium always. You know, mm -hmm. it's one of the biggest, um, it's really good for calming under stress. Yeah. And I think it's so important, you know, it's great for heart health as well. And it's often, isn't it, the one that's used as the last resort, even though potentially it should be used as the first. I know. Isn't that amazing? It's so amazing. <laughs> so, like, it's so easy to fix. Uh, exactly. So I'd love to dive into like the different brain types, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, sure. Um, you know, particularly going back to your nephew's story, um, if you if you wouldn't mind unpicking it for all of those parents out there that are listening and thinking, oh, my child is hyperactive, they can't sit still, they're not focused, how, how can I help them? Right. So let's remember that the, um, the brains of children are developed from your cerebellum all the way to your prefrontal. So when you have children in uh, middle school or even um, kindergarten through uh, five, their brains are definitely not developed. So their prefrontal is still a little low. So let's talk about the prefrontal. So your prefrontal is like the executive function. Yeah. So, yes. So we just bring up a little brain image here for people. Um, I'm just going to hold one because my brain's going to fall apart. But the prefrontal bit is here that you can see. For, for those that don't know, it's the very front part of your brain just behind yep. your forehead. Yes. Yep. And so really your your treatment or your behavioral treatments for that is kids really need um, to have structured goal setting. Mm -hmm. Like give them goals and boost. Let's boost that dop dopamine as well. So higher protein, lower glycemic food. Mm -hmm. Um, green tea is really great. And then you have your supplements, right? So you have um, our multivitamin at Brain MD, which is called the NerveVite Plus. Mm -hmm. Our omega 3s and our probiotic are those that are super, super important. And then also getting zinc or foods um, that have zinc in them. So you have like mushrooms and oysters and clams, like your shellfish. Mm -hmm. are really important for zinc and does it make a difference um so my daughter lily i'll just pick my daughter because it's easy <laughs> um she doesn't like cooked mushrooms but she'll eat raw mushrooms does it make is there any changes in the zinc uh uptake do you know um, uh, in mushrooms whether they're cooked or not cooked they're yeah so there could be um what okay so she doesn't like them cooked what you should do is keep the um, fin side up and put them on a ledge where the sun can hit them. Okay. And the sun will actually absorb the vitamin D, which is so amazing. So that, so I'm a total science nerd, just as a little side note. <laughs> so I always love like learning all the kinds of new things. So yeah. So when you put mushrooms with their um, gill side up where all of the, okay. yeah, where the sun can hit them, you'll get the extra vitamin D, which is amazing. Oh, I didn't know that. That's exciting. <laughs> yes. Um, also, yeah, so lower carbs for those kids um, with the low prefrontal um, that can't sit still. Not a lot, you know, just... Um, so more protein, more complex carbs with lots and lots of fiber. Yes. Uh, and low simple carbs, less chips, yes. less crisps. Less, <laughs> less mac and cheese. <laughs> less, less burgers and cheese. And well, if you do mac and cheese, so... So with my so with my nephew, so we did mac and cheese, but what I did is I put the vegetables in the mac and cheese. So make sure you're doing fresh vegetables in the mac and cheese. Okay. And we can still do pizza, but you have to add a salad. So yeah, the reward is the pizza and eat the salad first, kind of thing. Okay, yeah. Okay. I always like um, uh, is to wrap your a simple carb. So think of a, a wrapper for sweets. Is it, and not, but I'm not advocating eating sweets, 
but um, it is to wrap it in fiber. Correct. Yes. Yes. To, I love that. to slow it down. Yes, exactly. To slow it down for sure. Mm. And, you know, oatmeal is always good too. Um, oatmeal, you can throw in everything. You can throw them in cookies. You can throw them in, um, you know, smoothies even, you, especially if you have, it has to be gluten-free and it has to be um, organic. It has to be yeah. Bob's Red Mill or some sort of sprouted. Um, okay. Okay. And then, you know, we often talk uh, um, from a naming clinic perspective that children can be um, sensitive to grains yep. and also to dairy. So um, would you mind sharing, you know, what happens to children's brains when they have a, a overload or they're, they're perhaps sensitive to those um, two types of food? Yep. So what happens is you have your anterior cingulate gyrus. <laughs> that gets That gets a little lit up. <laughs> so let's come back to here. I don't know if we can see it. So the ACG is it inside the brain, just below the prefrontal cortex, um, uh, b before the deep part of the brain. So it's your it's your gear stick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly what happens. They tell you that um, you you just they can't go with the flow. They have they're always stuck on the same thought. So yeah, yeah. So it's over and over repetitive. So how we help them or strategies to help that um, child is to avoid, again, avoid the macaroni and cheese, avoid anything with sugar in it um, and physical exercise. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's super and super important. And then, you know, a bit, um, the omega-3s mm -hmm. um, and vitamin D. Um, at Emmy Clinics through Brain MD, we do have a vegan um, uh, omega-3. So okay, yeah. that's super, super important. And then you want to... Um, feed the child serotonin, right? So and how we do that. Um, so hummus, homemade hummus is a good one. Um, high quality proteins, mm -hmm. um, nuts and seeds, like a trail mix is super mm -hmm. important as a snack. Um, and, you know, just writing down different options on how to calm that part of the brain down when, um, you know, it's that person starts getting stuck on the, on the thought. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, even asking those questions is this thought, um, real i know you know how would i feel if it wasn't real you know just kind of those in and um automatic negative thoughts yeah and i i think it's such a great example to bring on the uh, to bring into the conversation the automatic negative thoughts that you mentioned the ants that often were swimming around in our mind particularly for some children yes. um depending on their life you know how their world is evolving and where they are in terms of their brain development yes and how active parts of their brain are um and it's really helpful isn't it to to teach them how to squash the ants yeah i often say this to my daughter is you've got ants <laughs> yes <laughs> you've got ants yes. in your head you've got thoughts that are not you know that are saying things that aren't necessarily true how can you change those thoughts <laughs> right exactly and squash the ants yes and um you know everyone everyone has them it's just a matter of how you um squash them like you said um uh, and i i just i just let people know that you know say take some deep breathing exercises do some um you know just focus and and just um concentrate on what is what is real what is um in front of you and just curb those negative impulses, really, and promote um, just better decision making by asking those questions. Mm -hmm. Asking the questions, is it, is it really true? Yeah, and, and often it isn't uh, really true. It's certainly not 100% true, and it's not making you feel great. <clears throat> right. And then we have to turn the thought around, don't we, to make sure that we reframe it to something that is more true. Correct. <laughs> and supportive than the than the previous thought. I'd love to um, dive back into, we talked about the um, anterior cingulate gyrus, which is which is your gear stick that can get stuck in some children and they, they want it that highway or my way or the highway, which is how my brain tends, tends to <laughs> operate <laughs> um, oh. for, for most of my life. It, and it's, you know, creating distraction techniques for the children, looking at calming it down, um, how do we really support the those children where their prefrontal cortex um, is low when they're trying to concentrate, which is typical in um, children with ADD? What what interventions can 
parents really make from a nutrition perspective uh, and I know we've talked um, some of them but I'd love to just replay them sure so um, high protein quali quality protein right mm -hmm. so it all it's that serotonin um, a lot of the well 90% of our serotonin is made in our gut mm -hmm. so you know we need to eat it to have it so if you're not if you're eating mac and cheese and, and chicken nuggets you're not going to get the serotonin that we need so good quality proteins, um, you know, uh, beans, nuts and seeds, even if you're eating um, animal protein versus plant protein, uh, just make sure that we, I mean, we all know this, that it has to be hormone free and, um, you know, running out uh, in the yard or, you know, um, in the field. Mm -hmm. Pref preferably grass fed. Grass, yeah, grass fed for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, just like I said, just quality protein. Yeah, it really is. And then your carbohydrates could be like a sweet potato, like a half of a sweet potato is, um, you know, kids love sweet potatoes, throw some cinnamon on there and just throw some, you know, real butter because um, our brains need fat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's really important because I think, you know, I certainly grew up in a world and I still struggle with it sometimes because I was brainwashed in the 80s um, <laughs> that that fat is not good for you but actually it's the converse the science was super shaky yeah <laughs> yeah so um, mm -hmm. and unscientific and actually it fat is really healthy fat um is very very healthy i mean our brain is 60 percent fat <laughs> it's actually our fattest organ it's our fattest organ that we have <laughs> Yeah. And historically, I think, you know, we used to eat a huge amount of fat. That was some of the f first foods that we would eat. And if you look at the Inuits and other tribes around the world, you know, that they use fat as their, their source of fuel. Absolutely. Um, yes, yes, yes. And, you know, there's, um, you know, getting back to the prefrontal with the with the protein. I mean, even just like spinach and broccoli, throw those. And even if the kids are still eating mac and cheese, throw throw those spinach and broccoli in the mac and cheese. You know, make them cut them up or even throw them in the food processor. You know, eggs are really important. And then fish, right? So fish with your omega-3s. And Yeah. And you can easily make a fish um, pie. Yes. Or a fish dish. Easily. Um, yes. With sweet potato on top or or include the include the skin of the normal potato so they get the fiber and it's not just pure potato. Exactly. And you have chicken and turkey, you know, too. So turkey is obviously, you know, has tryptophan in it, and that's actually the precursor to serotonin. So turkey is um, amazingly uh, important for, you know, protein um, for kids, of, you know, if you're eating animal proteins. Yeah, my, my daughter Lily absolutely loves chicken. Mm -hmm. uh, she could eat it until it comes out of her ears. <laughs> um, and so for us, um, because different parts of the chicken give you different nutritional content yeah. is we try and focus on the darker chicken correct um because it's more healthy for her and actually often that's a cheaper cut yeah yeah the fat um, yeah. But for those that are like i can't afford to feed my children this is it, it is the more nutrition <laughs> nutritious chicken yeah. can often be the cheaper one exactly and you know what let me just say something to that point um when i get that um or when I talk to someone and they say that, I, you know, I just kind of ask that question of, I understand, I grew up on a farm, I understand where you're coming from. But um, the development of a child's brain, it's our future, these people, these people growing up are our future. So we need to have them smarter, we need to have them, you know, have the best brains that they can have. So please just consider, even if it's it doesn't have to be, you know, instead of buying the things in the bag with food colorings, um, maybe pick up some celery or carrots, um, you know, even grow a garden because that will inspire the kids to want to eat what they've grown. Um, yeah. Yeah. Kids are sponges and and they just really, they'll believe me, it's one of those things where with my nephew, that's what we did. And he, um, he changed his diet and I mean, we ultimately did it together, but he was so much happier and healthier. Um, and it really does make a difference. How did you help it? You know, because, you know, often parents may think, oh, can't do this. My child just wants to eat chicken nuggets. That's all they want to eat. 
uh, and it can see seem like an impossible mountain to climb. How did you help your nephew um, do the switch? Because obviously he did it quite quickly. Yeah, um, it was, yeah. For the change to happen, but he just he just did it. Um, what what were the sort of key tricks of the trade, as it were, right. to help him do the shift from processed food to super healthy food? So I got, like I said, I got him involved in cooking. So I got okay. him in the process of helping me in the kitchen. You know, after his homework was done, um, you know, that's you know some of the things that we did together. And and he noticed a difference. He noticed that like he's the one who said something. And I was like, yeah, well, that's that's what we do, you know. So I, you know, just taking those initiatives um, to want to be ha healthier, to want your child to be healthier, to yeah. want your child's brain to be healthier. Yeah. I mean, really, um, it's just making the decision. And when you're buying, even if you're buying a breast, you know, you know, cut the breasts in half or even three times. You can, you don't need that those breasts. You don't need that much chicken. You only need the size of your palm. That is it. Mm -hmm. You don't need those big breasts. Of yeah, chicken. you can you can cut them in quarters or thirds. Exactly. And you can make chicken nuggets out of those. I mean, th that's what we did. That's what I did with my nephew. That's, you know, what we did. And he had so much fun doing it. Yeah. 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 My, with, with my daughter, she's, uh, you know, as I was mentioned, she's four, four and a half now. But the, the way I help her understand food is we talk about the soldiers in her gut. Um, and we talk about feeding the soldiers in her gut. So she's not feeding herself. She's I feeding her soldiers. <laughs> and we talk about the different types of soldiers. So we talk about the mummy, the daddy, and the children, uh -huh. which is kind of looking at different types of bacteria in her gut. She loves learning about the microbiome. She's all, she just loves watching the microbiome videos on, on YouTube. She's just, I think she's going to be a nutritionist in the future. That's but amazing. She, she asked me, mummy, is this, is this going to help my, the good soldiers in my gut or is it going to feed? the bad soldiers you know on the food yes that's amazing i love that <laughs> metaphor that you use right there that's perfect and you know what maybe moms and dads they use that metaphor because it makes sense and or you know I, even if it's bad bugs good bugs whatever it is you know just um, use a metaphor to make them understand um, yeah. that we, yeah. our food is definitely not like it used to be when i was a kid or when you know even you know 100 years ago you know, in 1900, we did not have heart disease. We did not have what was, it's transpiring now. It's unbelievable what corn and other um, genetically modified organisms have done to this world. Yeah. And it, and it gets worse, doesn't it? Because unfortunately, um, all of the modified uh, products that are made by the food industry, such as corn uh, isn't just fed to us but is mostly fed to the animals that feed us yes and so we have an increased um volume of omega-6 which is not healthy for us absolutely uh, in our in our meat products that we never ever used to have and that the what what you feed the animal feeds you so we end up with a, a omega-3 omega-6 imbalance which we would never have historically had because they all used to eat grass which has got loads of omega-3 in it when you eat eat it all um uh, which cause causes increased um possibility of new obesity because yeah. of the omega um index imbalance yes and you know what all the hormones they're putting into the the animals when you eat it you're going to be obviously you're eating the, the animal protein you're going to have that hormonal imbalance as well so mm -hmm. That's, I mean, there's so much, the trends in surgeries, the trends in just sickness and illness, it, it like is cyclical, right? So there's always, um, there's always damage being done when you're eating animal, commercial animal protein. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'd love to dive now. I know we talked about a, um, ADD children and how to help them focus on quite high quality protein and eliminating um, simple carbohydrates with high glycemic index. Um, and we also talked about um, children with um, uh, high uh, a gear shift that, yes. gear stick that is stuck. Right. Um, can we go now into um, the kind of like the COVID uh, era where we're now seeing children who have increased um, activity in their deep limbic system, which is causing them um, depressive symptoms. Yes. 
which um, is your deep limbic system down here in the central region of your of your brain um, around this area. Yeah, and that in that area um, is 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 sadness, depression, mm -hmm. and that's what we're we're, got, we're seeing in the kids. You know, it's even through like stress. There's kids are more stressed than they've ever been before. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really sad. It's they have even like guilt, you know, that guilt feeling. Kids are having guilt feelings. I mean, that's just incredible. Mm -hmm. They're having sleep issues and they're not eating properly, of course, right? Mm -hmm. And what's the driver behind? I mean, obviously, COVID has had a huge part to play in the context of shifting children from having their normal interaction that they would have had on a face-to-face -face basis mm -hmm. to be just being swamped with digital technology and online mm -hmm. is that the primary um uh, driver behind the the changes that we're seeing in in children's mental health or is it is it also um you know combined with the the chronic state of the food system um and the you know the nutritional desert that that children are now experiencing yeah, Dr. Ruth, I really think it's a combination of mm -hmm. both of those things. So, you know, with with the brain, I mean, physical activity, like getting the kids out and doing um, running and playing with them, that's that's going to create new neurotransmitters is what we need, you know, the synapses. We, that's what the kids need that. The kids need to get out and play. The video games are totally hindering. Um, they're, they're making our children uh, more depressed, more mm -hmm. sad. Um, vitamin D, you know, getting outside uh, with the kids again, you know, and um, acupuncture is something that you might want to try. And then also the neurofeedback, right? So um, doing, um, you know, just seeing how your kids are responding to neurofeedback. Yeah, I, I think it's so important, isn't it, to just look beyond the normal um, interventions that might be offered um, as a quick fix, which would be the you know, um, often parents think, well, OK, um, we'll go to the, the medical practitioner and they might say, well, we just need to put them on um, an antidepressant without that. actually understanding what the root cause is or root causes yes. are um, behind why your child is um, feeling deeply sad right. uh, and depressed, of which there can be like so many that individually it isn't much but cumulatively it's a it's a huge huge impact on their cognitive health yeah and you know what just surrounding them with positive people um and creating um i, I know a support group for being more positive and, mm -hmm. and again so nutritional deficiency so supplementing with um amino acids i mean amino acids are needed for the brain to produce dopamine, serotonin, uh, which are associated with those, um, you know, to the way that children have um, absorbed proteins. Yeah. And would you, where would you say that your amino acids come from that, that, that you know, what food groups or um, food types should people be taking to, you know, get the, the all of the amino acids? I think egg is a great one, isn't it? Source for getting all of the uh, proteins and um yeah. correct me if i'm wrong <laughs> no you're absolutely right so right so good quality protein so make sure that you know chicken eggs fish you know hummus you, there's plenty of great recipes don't get the one in the store make it yourself um mm -hmm. you know and spinach and broccoli again you know the nutritional deficiencies like uh, zinc copper iron and magnesium they are not in our soil mm -hmm. so these are so important for for children who have ADD, ADHD, um, who can't sit still, mm -hmm. you know, you really have to um, consider what the food is doing to their body. It's either helping them or it's hurting them. You know, mm -hmm. Hippocrates said it best, you know, um, exercise, which boosts dopamine. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I totally agree. Now, you know, when we went into lockdown over here in the UK, there was a lady who lived up the road in a flat um, who was at, at an, in the at-risk group mm -hmm. and she kept she had to keep her children in 
the flat as well because she was scared of letting them out and exposing them to the risk of getting COVID because obviously she she was she was a single mum. Um, and actually, she came to me because um, we set up our street community group, a Facebook group, and said, "My children are really depressed." what can I do and I said you just need to get let them outside yeah <laughs> so that they can get their vitamin d because the, they need the sun go play um, in right. order to boost their mood and a lot of parents don't realize that you know your your children can get what's almost seasonal affective disorder yes um, because they're not getting enough exposure to the sunlight in sun in the times that the sunlight is available because they're stuck behind a computer in at home or at or at school. Yes, I agree with you. Yes, get out, play with your kids, and um, play yourself. You know, it's um, we need that creative to give us just um, you know our our after being locked down for so long. I mean, we need our we need our you know souls, and just everything needs to be regenerated. You know. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd love to dive uh, into mindful eating now a little bit because I know that's the topic of your book. But before before we do that. Um, I, I want to just explore the five pillars of brain health. Just ask you a, f a few questions around the five pillars, which is okay. remember by saying, let's look at the facts, which is feelings, actions, connections, thoughts, and surroundings. So just for, for you first, what um, feeling or emotion is the most important to you in your life and why? Ooh, feelings. Um, or action, um, wow. Um, I would say my feelings that are so important to me are having um, peace. Oh, yeah, that. I love that. Yeah. I, and I know someone else has mentioned that on the show as well. And peace can look like boundaries too, right? So sometimes, um, you know, boundaries can be hard to set. Um, so I've been learning myself to um, be more peaceful and setting more boundaries because Again, um, when you're talking about mental health and brain health, you really have to um, give your time, give yourself time. Um, and, you know, sometimes we all go through life, right? So whether it's a death or a marriage or a divorce or, you know, whatever it could be, it's a life event. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, just putting up those boundaries for your peace. Yeah. That internal peace. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and also creating the external peace around you to in order to have your inner peace is so important yes exactly. how do you find that for yourself personally because this is a, like a huge topic which I think we could talk about for hours but you know often people do, in today's society everything is rush 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 um, and we don't give ourselves permission right. to find peace within ourselves how, how is it you do it for yourself personally if you right. wouldn't mind sharing. No, of course. Thank you. Um, so I do a lot of time blocking. Okay. So I block time um, and I either make time before I wake up in the morning, you know, get out of bed mm -hmm. or before I go to bed. So like that magic hour of waking up and going to bed, that is really, really super, super important um, for sleep hygiene, number one. But also, um, I started this probably about a year ago, and um, it's just really great for peaceful boundaries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and the next question on the five pillars is actions. What's the most rewarding or fulfilling thing you've ever done? Whoa. Um, I think ooh, fulfilling. Um, writing my first book took me like seven months. So that was really, and that's mindful eating. Um, <laughs> And it's super, super exciting. Um, so I can say that. That's very quick to write a book, um, <laughs> you know, particularly the caliber of book that you've written is it can take people a really long time. That, to me, that feels that's like quite quick. Yeah, um, I was just really passionate. And, you know, sometimes um, a contest can make you motivation. <laughs> like, you want to do it quicker? So <laughs> one of my friends had put me into a contest and I was like, oh, my gosh. OK, well, I got to win, you know, because I'm always the one person. <laughs> I got to win. <laughs> so, you know, and I, but I've changed that a lot, you know, in my life. But um, it's OK to lose. It's all right. But I love that. I love that. And then just finally on the five pillars is surroundings. What's what aspect of your surroundings, including how you live, the people you surround yourself with or nature bring you the most joy? Oh, I would say my family, uh, well, faith, family. And um, 
I really enjoy what I, I love what I do. Um, and I love helping people. Um, I, I just enjoy, like when people have told me or even just a testimonials, it just makes me feel so amazing. And then I know that I'm, you know, living my, my purpose. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And I, I love to dive into your book a little bit more now um, on mindful eating. Mm -hmm. um because we seem to have lost the art of mindful eating uh -huh. particularly from a societal perspective depending on what what type of culture you live in yes. um i have it on my on uh, show show your book up so yeah. people can see because i have it on my phone on kindle so um people seem to have lost the art of mindful eating don't they um because of, of this rush 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 in society mm -hmm. and obviously you mentioned that you know part of helping your nephew Yes. on his journey to healing his brain and um, which he did himself by the way um yes. but with nutrition to support him so he's optimizing the food to optimize his brain yes was was being with him and teaching him about nutrition and foods that will help him and those that will hurt him and getting him involved in that whole eating process um so could you just Describe to those that don't really know what mindful eating is, what it is, and how people can go about it, what impact it will bring to them as part of optimizing their, their brain health. Yeah, um, so mindful eating is just being aware of how the food is affecting you. Mm -hmm. um, and it's easy to do. You can do it with anything you have in your mouth, um, from a seed to a nut, to a piece of plant, uh, spinach, just being aware of the taste, the smell as you bring it up to your mouth, looking at it before you eat it, look how beautiful it looks. And then as you swallow, um, just listening, you know, bringing in all those senses um, and then how you feel. Mm -hmm. um, I did this yesterday because <laughs> I, because I was super, I don't spend time mindful eating in the way that you've described in your book. So I thought I would do this yesterday. And um, I picked my one of my favorite foods, which is chocolate. Yes. And I spent <laughs> and I spent the time tasting it and smelling it and under you know, putting it on my tongue and sensing how it felt, sniffing it. And actually, um, it didn't smell as nice as I thought it would. <laughs> um, because I don't I didn't you know, I, what I'd normally do is pick a, a chunk of chocolate, shove it in, go, mm, lovely, and then uh, and then get on my way. But when I took that real time to connect my five senses with the flavour of the chocolate, and for those chocolate lovers out there, I definitely can eat more than I should do. Me too. <laughs> on 90% <I'm> chocolate. Too. <laughs> it's the other food group. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there's very many of us, many of us out there all in the same boat. Yes. Um, but actually taking the time to really be mindful of what I was eating made me think, Do you know, it's, this is not as pleasurable <laughs> um, as I thought it was when I slow myself down. Uh -huh. um, and today I haven't had any um, chocolate. I've had some chocolate cake I made, um, which is uh, uh, Tanya's uh, recipe. Thank you, Tanya. Uh, for for her lovely recipe, um, uh, but I've I've not had that you know I've not had that want to reach out for the cho the piece of chocolate that I would normally do. Um, so I think it I think it's an amazing way in which we can connect ourselves with what we're eating and also how it's making us feel not just now but also later as well. Yeah. So um, this is really interesting. So this is something for listeners to try. Uh, if you have them at home, don't buy them specially. So, so cho dark chocolate is so amazing. So what was the percentage of dark chocolate that you had? 90%. It was a new type. Yeah. So my husband brought me two bars. One was 80 and one was 90 because I find the 70% too sweet now. Mm -hmm. um, thanks to the aiming clinics. I don't, I'm not addicted to sugar like I was. Right. Um, so it was 90. Yes. So when you have that higher dark chocolate and you have a square and because obviously, you know, the cacao, cacao is actually naturally sweet. You don't even need to add the extra sugar into it like the mm -hmm. other commercial crap does. But if you happen to have the commercial crap, um, when you're doing that popping, that popping is what's happening is that um, sugar is sitting in the back of your villi. So you keep tasting it. So that way you want more. 
And it's just, uh -huh. it's the sugar that you're tasting. And that's why you, that's why you're like popping them. So stop popping and get the 70%, 80% or lovely 90%. I do 95 and it's just, I love the squares and you only need one or two. And that's, yeah. that's all you need. And that's really, that's where the magnesium is, you know, and that's where just almost all the deliciousness is. Mm -hmm. And do you know what I find about the higher percentage chocolate um, that I eat is it feels more velvety mm -hmm. um, because because you haven't got the graininess of the sugar in it as well. Exactly. So it's actually I actually find the sensation of eating it uh, much more pleasurable mm -hmm. than having the, the grainy um, sugary stuff. Yeah, I stopped. Um, so I was a, at, at one point and it's in my book. I was a, when I was at Wells Fargo. Uh, I was addicted to chocolate covered espresso beans and <laughs> yes. I was too a long time ago. They were everywhere. <laughs> so, so I was like, Oh my God, I have to stop this. And then um, now I can't, I can't even have one. It's just so interesting. Like it's yeah, I can't even do it. Yeah. I'll tell you a funny story about that. So we had this uh, coffee shop Wittards in, in the UK. You may have it over in the States. And they used to sell these chocolate coated coffee beans and it was all the rage about, um, back in the 90s. Yes. I think it was. And that was a time that I was um, going through military training as an officer cadet. And I took two bags with me away on a military training weekend and I ate them all. Oh. And I literally couldn't sleep the whole weekend. I like I was so tired, but I, my brain was so wired. I, yeah. I had no idea about the dangers of all of this and caffeine and everything. I was so wired the whole weekend. I think I slept for like half an hour, oh. and that was a real struggle. Because and I, I think after that, I just stopped eating them um, because I, it. Oh yeah, yes. no, and they were I, so delicious, but so. Um, so not good for you. So not good for you in so many ways. But had they made them healthier, I mean, it probably would have been better. But I, yeah, I can't even do them anymore. It's really bad. Yeah, 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 yeah so, amazing. So I love them, but it's it's really not bad for your. It's that it's really bad for your brain because of the the caffeine. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, so I'd love to know. Um, you know what? What would you say the key benefits are for people in that from an individual perspective? Firstly, and then secondly, in a group context, whether that's a family uh, environmental perspective or, or a wider group of people when you when you focus on mindful eating. OK, so um, as an individual, just um, I would say, um, you know, journal um, journaling helps so much. Just get those negative thoughts out. Um, drink more water. Take your supplements because everyone needs them. Take care of yourself because you are um, you are taking care of others. So you need to take care of yourself first um, and sleep. Get sleep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I've really found with um, uh, with some of my clients when they do the mindful eating challenge is getting them to write down how they feel after eating food. Yeah. Um, and people don't realize that food impacts mood. Yeah. As much as it does. Um, could you give some like stories of uh, any further stories of where pe clients perhaps you're willing to share clients of yourself um, have really had a woken up to the, uh, you know, the benefits of mindful eating in the context of their awareness of their mood with with different food types? Right. So <clears throat> when when you start when when you're eating pasta and and I have clients who have done this and then you instead of having a bowl a big dish you make it a side plate mm -hmm. and that has really changed um, the mindset so I'm not I'm not telling you not to have it but I'm telling you to don't have a big plate of it have a side plate that was one of the biggest um, I would say changes that uh, my most a lot of my clients had so. And again, it's, it goes back to the pizza thing, right? Yes, have a slice of pizza. But before you get to the slice of pizza, you have a salad. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that has really been, it, um, I guess, the switches, right? So, and then um, eating oatmeal mm -hmm. is so, you can eat it any time of the day. So you can eat, have, um, as long as it's gluten-free and it's, um, it's not made in that cylinder container. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can, yeah, so it's, you can have it at any time of the day. Um, I'd say adding in more foods 
then um, I really take away from, from my clients, from my patients. Ah, yeah. That's really interesting. And what, what would you say um, are the bit, like the easy, the easy food, the easy hanging fruit, as it, uh, or the low hanging fruit, as it were, yeah. um, for people to do a swap? Okay, so instead of um, okay, so instead of ice cream like the stuff you buy in the store, you can make it out of bananas. But if you don't like bananas, um, that's probably a problem. But um, making it with bananas is an easy mm -hmm. swap. Um, switching out the um, store brand uh, hummus to making it yourself is an easy switch, and it tastes so much better. Uh, another easy switch would be um, well, um, oatmeal porridge. Uh, you could do quinoa porridge. Um, I love. I do you know. I love the idea of quinoa and porridge. I've never even tried that. The quinoa and porridge. Oh yeah, it's really good. Instead of using the oatmeal, you can use quinoa, and you have your protein there. Yeah. Oh wow. And then um, would you would you say to put chia seeds in there as well as as? as... <laughs> yes. Yes. Chia yeah. and sunflower seeds and uh, walnuts. So walnuts look like our brain, right? So, you know, it's one of those God things that he made the, the walnut for our brains. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And um, what what advice would you give? Um, because this show is all about brain health and unchaining your pain, Karen, what advice would you give to any parent that is struggling with their either their um, cognitive performance because they're eating a lot of processed food all their children's cognitive performance, what advice would you give to them uh, to, to improve it? Uh, uh, supplements, mm -hmm. grow the garden. Um, and then, you know, again, just spending time being outside playing um, to get the creative uh, juices, minds, just get everything moving. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, just really, you know, do things with your kids together, cook in the kitchen, um, spend time watching uh, DVDs or, you know, stuff that's on, um, you know, Netflix or, you know, the documentaries. Learn more about what's in your food. Yeah. I, I do know. I think it's so important. And, you know, there's so many books out there, including your own, of course, um, which has got a, a, a wealth of information that you can learn all of the different food groups that you can use and how they'll support your health and um, how you can how you can menu choices that people can make to to support their um, nutritional status and their and, and improve their brain health. So how with that in mind, how can people get hold of you to learn more about their improving their nutrition and, and mindful eating? Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. So there are over you know three to four hundred different dietary theories. So, you know, it's important to know how, what's good for you, not what's good for a certain diet. So, you know, at Amy Clinics, I coach our patients to improve their brain health and transform diet. I manage their conditions and discover new, healthy, you know, delicious recipes to optimize their brain function. But in addition, I address um, brain health. I can support hormonal imbalances, autoimmune disorders, high cholesterol, digestive issues, sleep difficulties, weight loss, and also clinical hypnotherapy. I can be reached at um, karenmayo.com. Uh, I can be reached at Amen Clinics. And my telephone number is area code 914-589-1833. That is great. And I'll put all of that in the show notes, Karen. Thank you so much. So that's karenmayo.com. And also on Instagram, you're on Mindful Mayo. And so that's the healthy mayo. <laughs> Um, so Karen it's been so lovely thank you so much for coming on my show and sharing your wisdom on mindful eating and the journeys and the stories um, around how you've been able to help others including your wonderful nephew achieve extraordinary um, results through the power of nutrition oh, Dr Ruth I'm so honored thank you so much for inviting me <laughs> you're most welcome remember everyone this show is all about brain health unchaining your pain you're not stuck with the brain you have you have the power to make it better and Karen has finally hit, been here to show us how I really hope you enjoyed that conversation thank you so much for listening please be sure to like and share this episode and leave a review on my website or on Apple Podcasts if you're looking for opportunities to optimise your brain health 
or unchain your pain from a past trauma, make sure you visit my website, www.ruthmaryallen.com and use the code PODCAST10 at checkout to get 10% off all programs. And always remember, you are not stuck with the brain you have. You have the power to make it better. You have the power to unchain your pain and optimise your brain power and performance so that you can win back energy and time doing what you love.